Today, a group of S2000 owners are gathering for a drive. On any given weekend around the country, other owner groups are probably doing the same, as these owners are passionate about their cars. In the late 90s, as Honda Motor Company approached its 50th anniversary, they wanted to create a car that would celebrate Honda's racing spirit, if not the spirit of Mr. Honda himself. Soichiro Honda had a lot of dreams. He was a maverick in a society where conformity was expected. His innovation and leadership would take his company from the ravaged landscape of post-war Japan to the forefront of automotive production and beyond. Honda's love of racing brought his company to Formula One in 1963. During the next four years, they would win two times and gain valuable experience. In 1983, Honda returned to F1 after a 15-year absence. Between 83 and 92, Honda won a remarkable six consecutive Constructors' Championships and five straight drivers' titles. Three of these titles were won by Brazilian Ayrton Senna, and when Honda wanted to create a supercar, Senna was asked to help with its development. Senna was involved with the final suspension tuning for the car and provided valuable feedback to Honda's engineers. Early in the NSX development, one of the alternate suggestions was for a small, light roadster like the S360. This little-known convertible holds the distinction of being one of the first road cars built by Honda Motor Company. For their special 50th birthday present, Honda went back to the earlier concept for a lightweight sports car and began showing the sports study model on the car show circuit in late 1995. Finally, in 1999, Honda revealed that the new sports car would be called the S2000 and would be available through Honda dealers worldwide. It was first shown as a prototype at the Tokyo Motor Show, uh, and uh, today we're going to announce it to the public here at the LA Auto Show. Uh, it's a 240 horsepower sport roadster. Uh, it's a throwback uh, to the old models. Uh, it celebrates 50 years uh, of uh, Honda, uh, and I think the, the, the key features that you really want to know about here is that it's a fun-to-drive vehicle. And what is this engine start button you're wearing? But once again, it's a throwback. Uh, Mr. Honda was big in racing, and if you remember, the old race cars always had a start button. I think that probably everybody who's in the market for a sports car needs one with a 9,000 RPM red line, where the torque peak is at 7,300. That's the torque peak, and the horsepower peak is 85. It's just insane, and I love it. One of the great things about a good sports car is the sound of a good engine, and they don't come much better than this. At about 7,000 RPM, you instinctively start to reach for the shift lever, but the party's just starting. Between 7 and 9,000 RPM, the VTEC kicks in, and you have all kinds of top-end power. Always puts a big smile on my face. The automotive press loves that VTEC, and the owners we talked to felt the same. Just a uh, large surge of power. It's, uh, it makes the car very fun. <laughs> it's the whole reason they still got the car. Just be, when, you, when you go past 6,000, you just feel that, that grunt of the engine and the pull. It's just so much fun every time. Pure joy. It's super fun. <laughs> I don't think I can go a day without driving my car. Mmm, <laughs> it's a good feeling. <laughs> when VTEC kicks in, it's like a punch. It's like. It's, it's like happiness begins. It just, it just brings a smile to your face. Um, the car just takes on a whole different personality. Yeah. In 2004, Honda enlarged the engine to 2.2 liters. This improved the torque output, but lowered the red line to 8,000 RPM. So, which is better? 9,000, of course. 8,000. I say 9,000 is better. <laughs> 8,000? 9,000. 
nine grand, nine grand. Nine thousand. Well, you know, when I shift my car at eight thousand, it just doesn't have the same feel as when I shift at nine. So I'm gonna go with nine thousand. The S2000's double wishbone suspension is mounted to a unique high X-bone frame that is both rigid and light. But I think where the S2000 really shines is the balance of the chassis. The car responds to every input of the driver. There's very little body roll. It communicates immediately what it's doing as it goes through the corners. And it responds to every input that the driver makes. It has great turn-in, um, not unlike a uh, a very good 3 Series BMW, um, but I think the middle, middle of the corner cornering speed is, uh, is is better. That was pretty well. I mean, aside from the, all the other cars I've owned, this is the best one yet. Very precise, um, easy to drive. Uh, it feels really good. I've owned about six cars before I turned into the S2000, and this is by far the best handling car out there. It feels like it handles on rails. I mean, it's just the most fun to drive. Uh, I could never do this with any other car, and anytime I drive a different car, I, I feel like the handling, it handles like a boat. I just can't. Yes, uh, it uh, handles better than anything I've ever had, so I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how to um, break it down technically like a journalist, but basically it's a crisp, you know, sharp uh, turn in. It's a, it, it, is a little, it can get a little um, beyond your control if you cross that threshold too quickly. <laughs> only on the racetrack, okay? <laughs> and only twice. <laughs> I have spun the car a couple of times actually, right around the corner here, um, making 90 degree turns. A uh, few times. Four fun and once I spun out on the freeway on ramp. Many times. And uh, my most significant one. Um, while in the process of a very precise, controlled spin, um, a freeway barrier came in front of me, and, uh, and uh, I impacted that uh, quite heavily. <laughs> <laughs>